So obviously intrigued by the real position and see how it plays itself out. You, you went with Nathan to start. I mean, I know it's only the first preseason game. But why did he get the first shot out here? Oh, I just you know, random luck of the draw. I mean, all those guys are going to get a chance to compete. We and we chart the the reps. I charted the reps last night. I wanted to make sure I had a I had kind of a pitch count in mind for the guy that got the first shot at it to have, and then. Next week, it could be completely different. Um, there's a little bit of a process or a method to our madness and trying to get everybody a chance to compete. How did you like the way they played overall on that side? Well, just from us, the young guys, uh, like always, some good, some things that we need to get better at. Um, you know, we'll look at the tape with them. We'll, there's some corrections that we need to make, some things that we can do better. Um, but I think, again, I look at where we were and where we are now. I think we are getting better. I always look for that, number one, because if we're not, then, I'm, then I, I get concerned. Uh, I think we're getting better, and we just got to continue to work. And we'll keep the rotation going just like we've done. We'll play those guys in multiple positions. We have to. Um, can never predict what injury situation there'll be during the course of the game, can't, or through the season. And it's just important for us to have guys that can play multiple positions on a 53-man roster. So. Grugier Hill made an impressive red zone tackle yesterday. How do you assess how he's performed? Say, say that again? Oh, uh, Grugier Hill made an impressive red zone tackle yesterday. Yeah. How do you assess how he's performed? Well, he's done a nice job, and he, he is getting better. There's a lot of things he's still got to master. He will. He works hard at it. But again, that play yesterday, down in the red zone, I'm not sure we've got many guys that can make that play. I mean, it was just great. It was, you know, good for him. It was a heck of a play. And yeah. the Roy Rounds is another guy who made a kind of a highlight play with a big hit. Uh, where does he fit in? Well, he's right again. He's right in the mix of what we're doing. Though all those all those young guys right now are all uh, interchangeable parts, and they're all competing very well. I think they're all ascending and. Uh, uh, Leroy is one of those guys that thinks done a nice job. You know, he didn't have a lot of reps in the spring because of an injury. Uh, so there's some competitive reps that he didn't get early. Uh, but he's catching up well, and, and again, he's a he's a physical player. I'm, I like his demeanor, and I'm glad he's with us. How do you go about preparing for Nigel Brown Jackson? Well. <laughs> Well, Nigel's, Nigel's always an a important guy for us on defense, so losing him will is always an issue. But we'll have somebody, just like we did last year, that's going to step up and is going to play well for us and, and it's going to give us a great chance to win. So, uh, you know, never like to lose anybody, but, you know, we could be making the same conversation about somebody being out a week with an injury. The next man's got to step up. That's always been Coach Peterson's mantra. It'll be ours as well. Uh, We'll find a guy that'll step up for us against the Falcons and play well. Is that, is that part of the overall process of making all the linebackers a jack of all trades? Yeah, that plus again, you know, I'm always we always are bent a little bit towards who's going to be with us on game day and who's going to be with us through the course of a game. All of a sudden, you know, I it's as basic as saying, well, if we only have two Mike linebackers up and then one of them's down one week and I go into the game and I've only got one and all of a sudden now he twists an ankle or something happens and I've not trained anybody at that position doesn't do us or serve us well so again where it's a 53 man roster I think our guys understand that for them for us to survive through the course of a season and hopefully if you're fortunate enough to play into the playoffs to, is for that extended season guys have to be able to be multiple and I think in the long run it helps them because when they understand what other positions are required to do and what they do, I think it brings into focus a little bit more about why they have to do what they're doing on a particular play. It gives them a little bit better appreciation where the stress levels are on calls. And uh, I just think it makes it for a more well-rounded uh, player as well as protecting us through the course of the season in case we lose a guy for a period of time. What will be the you know the determining factors that you get the first crack at the road job? Well, somebody had asked me that earlier, and it and again it just comes down to uh, I think dependability number one from an assignment standpoint, and then production. Uh, I've got a I've got a little formula that I use uh, that charts negative production and positive production, and I you know base it on the number of plays that they play, and I come up with a little numerical value 
that tells me that player, for the number of plays that he plays, is the most productive player. And it may not be the guy that has the most plays. Uh, for instance, you may play 20 plays and have a more production in your 20 plays than my 40 plays. So it's something I track. We chart it every day through the course of practice and through the preseason. And it kind of gives me a little bit better of an idea of the guy that's out on the field, because sometimes you lose track of it. This is a guy that makes more plays. And you're always looking, and it also counts up negative production as well. So gives me a little bit better idea where guys stand and when we put them out there to play who who actually ends up making production you tell us how the it's a it's a horse race right now it is a horse race yeah we've got a good good competition they're all very close and, and uh, looking forward to see how it shakes out when it comes course. down to it will you weigh recent performance a little bit more early training camp performance? Oh, I'm not, I, I'm sure that there's probably, uh, it, you get swayed a little bit that way because you think if a guy has been in your program or been and getting the reps that you expect him to send and get better every week, I think you always look at that. Um, and yet you still don't want to get away from the fact of if this guy is more productive than the other guy, then, then really that's what best serves the team. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep working at it. So. How was uh, Jordan Hicks look this week? Good. He's done a great job. Uh, come back. He's healthy. I think he feels like this is physically is probably as good as he's felt coming into a training camp uh, since he's been with the Eagles. So, again, uh, High expectations for Jordan. Uh, probably no higher than what he has for himself. And uh, just he's done a nice job since he's been back. He just doesn't miss a beat. And is it easy to kind of jump back into the leadership role that he had after missing so much time? Uh, I think so for him because I think because of the type of person that he is and the kind of player that he is, I think he has a lot of instant respect from his teammates. Um, I think they understand when he's in there playing how how good he plays and what kind of leadership and what kind of management skills he has as a Mike linebacker. So I think that's easy for him to just recapture the attention of our football team and, and kind of just assume a, a natural leadership position. We've got you now we've got great leaders on defense. Now Jordan's certainly one of them, but you know, I mean you look at guys like Nigel Bradham, Malcolm Jenkins, Rodney McLeod. Um, Fletcher Cox, you know, uh, Chris Long. We've got a lot of veteran guys, I think, that take a lot of pride in in making sure we're steered in the right direction. So Jordan's certainly a, an important one, but he's one of them.